So over the past few months in my videos, and even before that, probably too, um, I've mentioned a few times that I wanted to get better with using synthesized audio rather than audio samples. Um, and I ended up at the idea of retro gaming and uh, like arcade cabinets, the NES, because with some knowledge of those kinds of systems, uh, it really is most of the time synthesized audio. Uh, they had sound cards that had separate channels like Square Wave 1, Square Wave 2, uh, Triangle Wave, PCM Audio, etc. Um, that processed a set of instructions to generate audio rather than just doing file playback, which you might hear on more modern systems and games. And so having that inspiration, which I felt was pretty fundamental to the idea of sound synthesis, um, I ended up settling on a target of trying to replicate the coin sound from Super Mario Brothers. And so starting out, I first off assumed I'd probably be working with just basic waves, as that would be what the sound cards would produce at the time. Um, I started out with a square wave. By accident, that happened to be the actual wave type I found out later that I needed for that. Um, just because the NES, it, it was produced using a square wave, that sound. Um, it wasn't on any of the other channels. I looked up what the actual sound, how to make it, was. Um, my results, um, I was hoping for something a little more technical. Uh, but I mostly just got like keyboard, piano uh, demonstrations of it being a B and an E which was useful. Um, and from there, since I wasn't getting as much as I wanted, I figured I would have to find out a little more on my own. So here we are in my Reaper session that I used to make this. Um, starting out, I just had this uh, MIDI track, which is driven by Union. Um, Union set as my synthesizer, uh, producing a square wave. Uh, only one oscillator on, just in case that would cause any issues to have more than one on. Um, I don't think it would, but... Um, and the MIDI track is with the correct pitches. We have our B and then our E. And if I play this back without automation... Oh, whoops. If I play this back without automation... This is the point at which I was essentially like, I need to see what the sound actually looks like. Um, Cause you can hear that it has too much sustain going on. It shouldn't just be sustained at a high pitch like that. It, ne it needs to somehow decay. It somehow needs to like fade out. And I was happy to realize it was actually a fade out. I harvested this audio so I could start doing comparisons and learn from it. And you can t tell how it just tapers off. Um, it seems to be a parabolic uh, taper, uh, which knowing a little bit about audio, um, decibels being a log logarithmic function, that actually makes sense that um, you would have this curved fade. Um, and whenever I put this sample that I harvested from the game in here, I was able to notice a couple interesting things. Um, First, I was able to notice when the pitch actually changed and do it pretty much exactly to the duration of the first and then the second pitch. Um, if we take a look at it, you can see where the actual wave gets uh, more condensed. Um, and that's just like a fundamental of audio. Um, right here, uh, looking at the waveform, because it's a higher pitch, you have more peaks and valleys in a tighter space. Um, and so I was able to nicely line up my MIDI notes with that, my sequence. Um, another curiosity that I noticed being the fade happens in stages. Like, you can see these steps here. And I'm not 100% sure why that happened. Um, my First guess being that there might be a sample rate issue, because if you listen back to this sample, at the end you can kind of hear it be a little more present. There's like this digital clicking, kind of clipping thing happening. 
and I think that might actually be just from harvesting the audio. Um, wondering if the sample rate that I'm capturing at, which is 48 kilohertz, is somehow competing with the output of the uh, emulated game. Um, but that doesn't, I think, answer the question of why you're seeing these stages. Though I might be wrong, this is hypothesis. I'm thinking the stages might actually be the result of uh, 8-bit audio. Um, and so what you're seeing is actually the the volume fade happening on a per-bit basis. Um, so that was actually very interesting to note. Um, but I couldn't quite get uh, more out of this without comparing my waveform to the waveform that I got from the game. And so at this point, I decided I needed to render out my audio and compare it to the audio that I captured. And so that's what we see here. It's called test three being the third render I actually did. Um, and you can see really how close I actually managed to get in my replication here. Um, there are a few quirks. Again, you don't have the staging. I think that's a hardware and or software, just not even an issue, just a difference. Um, I don't have the staging of the fade out and mine ends a little bit sooner just because I wasn't as precise. Um, there's a bit of a fade in on mine right here at the beginning. I think that's just Reaper baking that on there whenever it's it was rendered out um, because I don't have any sort of automation that's supposed to do that on my MIDI track. And one other curiosity from here being, you can actually see uh, when the pitch changes, there's like a really significant transient there. I'm not sure why. Um, hypothesis being, again, a hardware slash, slash software thing. Um, the limitations of the Nest hardware, perhaps, uh, it just wouldn't go higher than that. Um, though I would need to learn more about, uh, older audio systems and audio engineering to really say anything concrete about that. But if we play this back by itself... This, this is essentially this track rendered out into a waveform. That's what it is. It's, it's the Mario coin sound. I did it. Uh, it. It's essentially spot on. And really, that's not too complicated. Now having actually just done it, um, knowing that it just needs to be a square wave um, with proper fade out treatment and a, the proper pitches. But this, what ended up being a really short exercise here, I think, was a really great fundamental way for me to grasp uh, the production of synthesized audio in a game context. Um, I originally had a bigger idea of trying to make a bunch of sounds, but then I decided that replicating one was actually the, a better first step. And... Uh, I feel like I've learned a lot just from being able to look at my result, um, and the game result in a, uh, visual comparison like this. With that, I will catch you on my next video, which isn't planned out, but I'll see you there.